So I've been building a lot of keyboards in the past months and a majority of them are north facing. Yeah, you might be thinking that's a lot of interference. But actually, none of the boards that I built have interference, despite using Cherry Profile keycaps in some builds and how do I actually avoid interference? Well, there is a ton of ways to make sure that you don't get any interference and one of them is by using a proper switch. But before we get into that, what is interference? The simple definition of interference in the keyboard community is basically just interference between a switch in a north facing configuration with a cherry profile keycap. The keycaps are just hitting the switch when it's actuating, so it doesn't fully bottom out. Why does this happen though? Well, I don't know. My best guess is just proprietary design made for a specific configuration that made it into the mass market and now interfere with other types of design. Who knows, it's a theory. So if that is it, why not just make all keyboards south facing? Well, it's not that simple. There are pros and cons with north facing, interference being the best, but compared to south facing, it shines the RGB better, assuming you are using cherries and most of them don't have shine throughs, you'd be better off with soft facing. But there is a lot of good keyboards out there, especially in the budget segment, that is north facing. How do you get rid of interference then if you want a north facing board and you want cherry profile keycaps? Well, this is where your choice of switches is important to avoid interference. The easiest way to choose switches that could help with interference is choosing ones with long pole stems. What long pole extended stem is, is just an extended stem in switches. What this does, it leaves room for clearance that avoids the keycap and the switches from being in contact. So what are the switches that have long pole stems? Let's start with the obvious, the Glorious Pandas. The Pandas have been one of the well-known in the hobby. I think they made quite a big statement when they released a switch that is so close to the coveted Holy Pandas. Granted, they are not the absolute same, but they do imply a close connection. I'm not gonna go in about all the story and whatnot, but the Glorious Panda has an extended stem that shares similarities with the Holy Panda. I don't know how similar they are, I've never had my hands on some Holies, but the Glorious was made to fit in all GMMK keyboards, even in the north facing ones. They are a really good switch, good sound profile and kinda smooth with a really good dead dog bump. But they are on the premium side when it comes to pricing with a set of 36 costing $25. That's 70 cents per switch but they are worth the penny with a premium price comes a premium filter switch. For some of you that have been with the channel for a while, thanks. But you know that I myself prefer smooth linears instead of tactiles. But staying close to the tactile panda family is the evil airy. I've been a linear supporter through and through, but I'll make this one exception. I've been using this switch for a few builds and I really love it. The switch is said to be made in the same factory as the holy pandas, but they don't have the same characteristics. The evils have a very rounded tactile bump compared to the very snappy pandas. They are quite smooth, unlooped, but there's a bit of spring noise that can be fixed using loop. If you like softer and more rounded tactile feedback, these are good. You can get them from Ilum KB for 70 cents per switch. I'll put the link to every switch I mentioned in the description. Next are one of my favorite switches that I covered in previous videos. These are my go-to recommendations to avoid interference. This is the Taxi Linear Carriers. The Taxi Linear Carriers are one of my favorite sounding switches. The colors do remind me of the tangerines but they are totally different. From the material to the stem, Taxi claims them to be one of the smoothest switches in the market. No, nope, actually the world. Well, they are smooth, I can't deny that, but the world, that's a bold claim. In stock form, there is a bit of resistance, not as easy sliding as the Tenji's, and the sound profile is deeper. There is some spring ping that can be fixed with some lube. I would recommend using a lighter lube, like the 204, just because the heavy lube does make it feel a bit mushy and feels slow to press. 
but I highly recommend lubing and filming the stitches. It's gonna make it way more talkier. Watch me build a keyboard with these switches here. The Taxi Purple Pandas are the tactile version of the carrots, but as the name implies, don't expect it to feel like the other pandas. The bump is more subtle and not as snappy, but it is still a good option if you want a tactile carrot. They both come at a price of 55 cents per switch. Not bad. This is another taxi switch, not the Aqua King V3. This is the Taxi Ice Candy. This clear switch resembles the smooth Aqua Kings, but unlike the switch, it has a long pole stem that changes the characteristics of the switch. The feel of the switch does feel similar to the Aqua Kings, but I prefer the Ice Candy over the Aqua Kings. I'm not the biggest fan of both, mainly because they have this resistance that is clear when it's unlooped, just like the carrots, but even more. And it can be mushy when you use heavier loop or overlooped it. This is more expensive than the carrots and the purple pandas coming in around 65 cents per switch. You know what? I think Taxi missed by not being consistent with the food naming. It'd be cool to have Ube switches or aubergine or purple corn. Not gonna lie, a Steven Universe Ube log cake reference in a switch is pretty damn cool. But off to the next switch. No one really talks about these switches, but this is something you don't really want to miss out on. These are the Greyron Blizzard. I've used them in one of my previous builds and they sound and feel good. Stock the art moves with minor scratches, nothing major but they are better off looped and filmed. Same for the wobble. From the specs, they seem like a copy or a direct competitor to the pandas with the material used the same, but that is where the similarities really end. The tactile bump in the pandas is snappier compared to the blizzard which is snappy but it's way more rounded and even though the spring weight is the same, the blizzards feel way more heavier. If you are a light typer, this could make you feel tired of typing. These are for them heavy typers. There are 65 cents per switch. Another interesting switch I found was this, the Lumia Tactile. I found this switch a while back when I was researching for an EVA team build for someone. So if you are an EVA Jalen fan, you already know that there is a 0-1 switch by Duroc. But it is linear and it doesn't have an extended stem. So if you're planning to make a north facing EVA build, this would be a great option. Normally you can get this switch for around 70 cents a piece but you can find some great deals that bring the price down near 50 cents a switch. One cool thing about the switch is that the stems are soaked in oil which means that it expands to fit the housing perfectly and it is really smooth stock. Tactile Balm is nothing special, more on the average side, not too bumpy or snappy and not too rounded. Just a really good switch in general. I've heard that box switches are the ones to use with nose facing boards and have always thought that it's clear of interference, but actually it does have interference. Maybe they will be less noticeable in the clicky versions like the J's or white, but it's hard to hide it in linear switches. The good thing is the new versions of the box switches do not have any interference. The newer versions of the kale box switches gets rid of the iconic box stem replaced with a cylindrical one. The housing of the switch are changed drastically making it different than the typical switch that you can find in the market. The weight design makes it able to be used with cherry profile keycaps even without an extended stem. You can see it with the novel keys scale box screen. These are similar to the normal novel keys scream, feel and sound different being the shape and the cylindrical stem giving it a tighter tolerance. They also share the same trait of needing to be broken down before it has a smooth feel which I really don't like. In the deep sea ocean, a linear switch that they make has a clear part attached to the switch to disperse RGB lights. And despite that, it doesn't have any interference with cherry keycaps. But if you don't really need something extra in switches, they do also have normal silent switches like the pink and the brown. 
and there is even a pro version, the Box Master Pro or the Fried Egg Switch. This new weird shape housing sadly only comes with silent versions. Maybe in the future, they will make non-silent version but for now, the only normal-ish switch is the box screens. For the pricing, the novel keys box cream is a bit more expensive than the novel creams, understandable due to the bill of it. It comes in at around 17 cents per switch compared to the 65 cents for the normal ones. Only 5 cents more but in the grand scheme of things, that could be a lot. And the deep sea ocean for 70 cents per switch and the normal silent box switches for 60 cents per switch. The next switch is the Penyu. It means turtle in Malay. This is a creation of the Malaysian keep vendor Rebel. I like the concept of the switch being a statement of awareness for Malaysian wildlife. This switch of course has a tactile counterpart, the Harimau, which means tiger, which is the Malaysian's national animal. Like most national treasures, the Malaysian tigers are decreasing in numbers due to deforestation and excessive logging in the country. Creating awareness through an unconventional medium is really unique and I love the whole idea of it. Mixing keyboard and wildlife is just a cool concept. The switch itself is really smooth and it sort of reminds me of an alpaca, sound and feel. Granted, they designed the switch to resemble the cream parkers. The price of the switch comes in at 65 cents per switch. This is kind of a wild card. This is the Everglides Peacock. I think not a lot of people know about this switch. This switch is made by the people who made the Everglades Aqua King. But different from the Aqua Kings, they are made from PBT and have an extended palm stem. That makes them compatible with Cherry. They can be really smooth with some lube and they kind of feel like SP style white. And the difference is, it has an ascended stem. You can get this switch from 70 cents a piece. This is made for you Lakers fan out there. This is the Deru Violet Go, a tactile switch that I found while searching for a good tactile in a previous video. This is a pretty cool tactile switch with a long extended pole stem and a two-stage spring. Weirdly enough, this is the most similar tactile switch to a Glorious Panda. It feels a bit lighter though, assuming it's because of the spring. This is a really cool switch coming in at around 50 cents per switch. We need to talk about the ascended long pole stem though. The hard truth is that not all ascended long pole stem can prevent interference due to the fact that every switch has a different length of long stem. So the clearance in some row of caps isn't enough to stop interference. Like the Deru switch for example, it has an ascended long pole stem but it's not as long as the other stem. The clearance is enough to avoid interference but on the last row of keycaps, there is little to no tolerance for stem wobble that can cause interference. In this example, it's not the worst but you always have to be careful because not all extended stems are meant to avoid interference. KTT is one of the brands that have a lot of extended long pole stem switches. But like the previous switch, most of their switches long pole stem isn't long enough to actually avoid interference. In some cases where you have a thinner keycap wall, it could be a pass but in most cases it's just hard interference. In these switches, the extended stem is just meant to give a different feel than other switches. That's really unlucky because KTT makes really good budget switches that could be a great option if they can really avoid interference. But nevertheless, they are still a good option for your build, just not with cherry and north facing. These switches are in the same situation as the Deru. The Echo CS switches are said to be made to avoid interference with a bit of height built into the stem but sadly just like the Deru Violet Gold, it can have interference because the stem only creates a small clearance. Being the case that these are some of the cheaper switches that could potentially avoid interference with a budget friendly price, I don't mind having a little interference issues especially if it's just on the bottom row. There are a few options of switches out there that you can use for your build to avoid interference. But it's not 100% assured that all these switches are gonna have any. Just like some examples I gave, some do have interference issues even if they have an extended stem. 
some could be more major than others but the best thing to do is to make sure that you do your research and if you have the option to try out some stitches do so test them with your keycaps to see if there is any interference especially in the r3 and the r4 row there are other ways of avoiding interference like using some stem extenders or rolling out paper balls to be placed in the keycaps or some even shave parts of the switches to avoid any interference or the easiest way is to use other profile keycaps like XDAs it's all up to you comment below if I miss any switches and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions I'll be glad to help you out or someone in the comment section could. That's all from me. Why not give a like if you like this video and subscribe while you're down there. Stay safe and see ya.